Good morning or good afternoon to everyone. I want to explain that the mobile version is really an extension of the desktop version. It's meant to work in conjunction with it. Now that being said, you can start a new job on the desktop version and then send it out to the mobile user or mobile users, or you can start the job on the mobile app and when you're finished, uh, the person finishing the field, they can upload it actually automatically up to the cloud so the desktop user will get it on their on their screen. Now the version number that is current is this 6.31. Now if you don't know which version number on on the desktop version, if you go up to help and about, you'll see this build number where I'm pointing with my mouse, 6.31. Now I believe there's no problems using 6.3 or 6.29. Those are fairly recent versions too, but there's been some little glitches fixed. So if you don't have 6.31, you can call in and they'll send you a copy of it if they haven't already. The other thing you need to know about is the unlock codes. And now there's two kinds of unlock codes for the TNM program. There's the ones for the desktop. That's the one where it says TNM unlock code. Uh, that's a code that you put into to the computer that you're using it on the desktop. And that's basically a forever code. Now, that doesn't mean that sometimes the codes don't get corrupted or lost or need help putting them back in, but especially if you put it onto a computer. But um, those codes can be issued uh, either by emailing to support at visioninfosoft.com or just calling into the 800 number and they'll give it to you. So that's basically something you do when you purchase the desktop version. Now, the mobile unlock codes are going to be set up, again, to activate the mobile features. You can have as many mobile users as you want, uh, Android or Apple. You can, act, you can download those apps even without having the activation code just by going to the Google Play or the Apple Store and just downloading those first versions. If you search for TNM, T ampersand M, you'll find those the mobile versions are on the, uh, or you can download those apps easily and quickly. Um, but then to use them in conjunction with the, the desktop version, you'll have to put that activation code into the desktop version. So if you've purchased the program in the last year, you're automatically on ESP for a year, so we can issue activation codes. If it's past your first year and you haven't paid support, then you'll need to do that before they'll give you an activation code. So basically, if you're a current EBM, a TNM user, they'll give you an activation code to the TNM mobile version. So what else do we need to know about in the setup here? Okay, so let me show you what you need to know about setting up the desktop version as far as the users. If you come down here to, let's go to settings, and we'll go to mobile user maintenance. So what you'll do here the first time is set up an email address and a password, and then that allows you to get into the setup. And basically what you're going to do in the setup here is put in all of your users. You can have more than one email address here, more than even the same person can have more than one email address. So I've got two email addresses here basically for the same person. In the setup, you can also determine whether that user is able to see the prices that you're charging the customer. So that's, again, that's a situation you may have to decide if you're going to use the program to generate estimates in the field, which is a very feasible thing. I just trained a customer a week before last. Um, they have four or five mobile users, and a couple of them were using the program to generate small estimates. They go out and look, take a look at the job, put in the materials, put in the labor, and then they can generate an estimate. Well, obviously, in those situations, they need to see the price. So unless you've got some issues there where you don't want your users to, your, your uh, employees to see the price, then you'd leave that set to yes. Okay. Now, that's about it as far as the setup, I think. Um, let me just check one more time here. So basically, all the synchronization happens automatically with the exception of uploading the data. So let me show you where that happens here. There we go. Sorry. So once you've got it set up here, there's an option down here under Mobile Tools to upload the data. Again, you'll need the password to get into there. So basically, what you have the option to do here is to upload the whole TNM database, all of your customer records, and all the work order templates. Now, if you're not familiar with the work order templates on the desktop version, those are the hard copy version of the common materials that you typically would use coming out of your truck. Now, let me flip back to TNM here. Now, I've already done this step, so the next time the mobile user 
brings up the app, it's automatically going to bring in the latest database, the latest customer records, and any changes I've made to the work order templates. So I've already done that prior to starting the webinar here. It, it could take anywhere from two to three minutes, kind of depends on the speed of your computer and the, and the internet connection. So once you've done that, though, the, the mobile user has everything they need to do to need to create a job in the field. So they don't um, they can be offline, so to speak. They don't have to have internet access to input the material and labor for a job that they've already been sent, or just even to create a brand new job. They don't have to have internet access. They only have to have internet access at the point that they need to send the job back to the desktop user, or if there's jobs that they need to receive electronically, that's when they need the internet access. So we wanted to be sure that you know that this program could be used in remote locations where you may not have internet access for a period of time. Okay, so that's all in place. Let's go back to the process now. The The job can be created, again, like I said, on the desktop or on the mobile app, and it could be a situation, you know, where the customer calls in, needs some work done, so the desktop user comes in here, just like a regular job, and it's new job. So we're just going to call this mobile demo. So just like a regular job, you'd come down here to either pick an existing customer let me move this little window up. You can come down here and select a customer. You can create new customers. I've already got a customer in here, so I'm going to use that existing customer. It's going to fill in the address and contact information. Now, when you go to the work information, you can type in what the customer requested. Um, Okay, so I'm going to hit the, so at this point, I'm ready to, to send this job to the mobile users. So down here at the bottom, you just hit send to cloud. Why is it doing that? Okay. Oops. Okay, we'll try that again. Send to cloud. So then it's going to come up with that list I showed you at the beginning of the mobile users. Again, you can send it to more than one email address at a time. I'm going to hit send to cloud. I don't know if you need to check anything here, but you want to hit OK. So that job now is in the cloud, and it's ready to be uh, brought up by the mobile user. Now here's the tricky part. I've got this program that allows me to show you what's on my mobile device. It's called Reflector. So I'm going to bring it up here. It needs a code number. Okay, so what you see right now is what's on my mobile device. Now, this is a little bit tricky. You'll have to bear with me because I've got my right hand using my mouse on my desktop, and I'm going to use my left hand <laughs> to to uh, on the on the on my tablet. Now, I'm using an iPad Mini here. That's plenty big. Like I said, you can also use this on a smartphone. So I'm going to tap on OK, and you'll see down here at the bottom that there's a pending job. So I just tap on it. And there's the job I just sent. So I'm going to tap on that. So there's my three work order forms. If you were in the last uh, webinar, I created a new one that I added and deleted some items. So I'm going to use that for now. And then it brings up the information on the job. What was ordered? Now at this point, if the electrician is done, they can actually type in what they did. I'm just going to abbreviate a little bit here, just in the interest of time and me typing with my left hand. Yeah, like I said, okay. So now I'm ready to go on in the on the on the mobile device and put in the data from the job. So now you just tap right in the middle here where it says data. Now, if it's something on the work order form, it's really easy to input. You can tap on EMT, tap on three-quarter inch. Now, you'll see the price there. I'm going to put in 100 
and 10 feet. Going to hit OK. If I want to use more items in the work order form, I can come up here. You can see cu connectors, couplings. I'll do some couplings. Three-quarter inch. We'll put in 11 of those. Let's do one more item from the work order form. I'm going to use this little back arrow. Go to connectors. Oops, wrong button. Connectors. For those of you that have been using the, the hard copy version, I think you're going to like this particular part of the program. If you've never used that printed work order form, then stay tuned. Then the next way I'm going to show you may be a better option for you. We're going to put in 10 connectors. So that's one way to input the material is just to use those items that are on your hard copy work order form. Now the other option is just to do a search. This little button up in the top right, if I tap on that magnifying glass, it'll let me search the TNM database. So I could put in something like, if I'm looking for a one hole strap, by the time I type in only three letters, I will already see the item I'm looking for come up. So I'm going to tap on that second one, the three quarter inch one hole strap. I'm going to put in 20 of those. Hit OK. So I think this lookup part of the program is really the easiest way to do things. I want to clear it to hit the little X for the next item. Let's say I'm looking for THHN. It helps to hit the right letters. Bear with me, I'm, I'm, I'm tapping with my left hand. So I'm going to tap on number 12, THHN, right there. I'm going to put in 500 feet. There we go. Let's see, what else do we need? Let's say we need stainless steel plates. If I clear this, I'm going to type in D. Let's just type in plate. Keep it really simple. Now, if you look down in this list here, there's plastic. If I scroll down a little further, there's one gang right there, stainless steel duplex receptacle plate. Boom. We'll put in five of those. Something common like a cut-in box again. You can clear the description field or the text field there. A lot of these, when you type in two letters, you're already there. Two or three letters, boom. We're going to put in five of those. So that's why I was saying if you're if you're not familiar with the the work order form, just go straight to the search option. You're probably going to find things pretty quickly and easily, especially the second or third time you you look it up. You'll know what couple of key letters to type in here. So we can do the same thing for items that aren't in the TNM database. If I need to add in a widget, just a dummy item, I'm going to hit this little back button, tap on that. We're going to go to the plus button up here. That's to add items. We're going to put in a widget. So this is probably an item that the electrician doesn't know what to put in for the price. If they did, they agreed that they're going to charge the customer $10 a widget. You could put that in. Otherwise, we'll just leave it uh, as zero, and the, the desktop user can deal with that. So we're going to put in five widgets. And then again, if we've got materials that we purchased just for the job, where we've got an invoice with a catalog number or a package with a catalog number, we just go ahead and tap on the plus sign. And we're going to type in Hubble. We're going to make it a 5362 again. And again, we don't know the price at this point that we're going to charge the customer. And we'll put in five of those. Again, if you if the electrician has told the customer what they're going to charge, just put that number in. Hit OK. Finally, for labor, again, you can use the little search button, the magnifying glass up here. Type in just a couple letters if we're looking for the journeyman rate. Type in J-O. Boom, we're there. So I'm going to put in 16 hours. Again, I could use this little notes field here to type in the Try that again. Type in the names of the electricians, the date they did the work, any other details you want to attach to that item. 
Okay. That's the idea. There is one other option. Let's just back up a step here. So the, the options written put in the material are the, are the items on the work order form, these common items. This little plus sign lets you add a temporary item. The search button, the magnifying glass lets you search. And then if you're familiar with navigating the TNM database, you can go right there. With Oops, I went back just then. This little icon with the little stack of disks goes right to the database for the TNM program. So if you know something under miscellaneous charges, for example, maybe you're going to charge them for a ladder or a scaffold. We'll do a daily rate for a scaffold. We'll put in two days. So this could be things like permits, it could be uh, mileage charges, a lot of people charge for mileage. That's, that's the kind of things you can put under miscellaneous. Okay, so now we're ready to review the, the job. We're going to hit the little top button here that gets us back to the main level. I'm going to go back one more time with the back arrow. So at the point that you've finished input in the material and labor, I'm, I'm clicking it, come on, my fat fingers. There we go. When we finish the data input, we can go over to the third option here, which is the summary. So now we've got the total for the bottom here. It's got an option to close the job if we want to close it just for now. If we finished, we can hit sign and post, sign and post, and then the customer can sign off. And then when you hit post, automatically post it up to the cloud so the desktop user will receive it as soon as they are back in the program. Okay, so it's been uploaded automatically. So we're going to go back to that job. So there's a little option down here under modal, mobile tools to go to the jobs inbox. Now sometimes there's a little bit of a delay here if you hit check cloud. It should find it pretty quick. There it is. So there's the job I just input. I'm going to double click on it so to select it. So at this point, I've got a couple of items that didn't have prices. So the widget, we're going to hit edit because we need to tell it whether it's a material or a labor item because in a lot of places, they're treated differently as far as sales tax and markup and all those things. So I'm going to tell it material. It'll know to mark it up my standard 50%. I'm going to put in $10 for the cost or $10 for the price we're charging the target price, so it's going to mark it up to 15, but my cost is 8. So this item is a great item to show you how to import from Epic. So when I hit Edit, tell it its material, and hit Database Import at the bottom. Now, I kind of cheated here because I already looked up that item. Let's pretend I didn't. I'm going to go to Manufacturer Lookup, H for Hubble, double-click on Hubble Wearing Devices, and go to Lookup by Catalog Number. So there's the item. To export this, just like if you, you always do, you hit the export button, takes that item back into the job. It's got a T on it because it's a temporary item, but it took the trade price, and now it's going to mark it up 50%. So that takes care of the, the, the temporary items that the user input in the field. We're all done, so we're going to hit Save. And then we're going to approve it. That's all the things that are, I can still change things, delete things, add things. I'm going to approve it. Then it's just a matter of, of printing a hard copy or making a PDF to transmit to the customer or both. So if we come over here to job file and hit recall last, there's the job. Everything's ready to go. We just go to print and we'll do preview. Let's do that one more time, preview. So there's your invoice. It's a pretty straightforward little app. Um, you know, it will help you get things set up as far as the code numbers and if you need any help just in the basic um, navigation. There are some help videos. Under help videos, there's one on the desktop mobile part of it and the mobile 
app part of it. So there's three videos, one on the general desktop, one on the mobile part of the desktop, and then one on the mobile app. So that may just help you with a little bit of the flow, but you know you can also call and we'll help you with it too. Like I mentioned, I did a an on-site training session with a, a user who uses EBM also, but they were also using uh, the mobile app on uh, several of their electricians' uh, devices. So we got that up and running pretty smoothly. I think that's going to wrap it up here. Thanks again. Here's